Friendsville, Tennessee, where friends gather. Population 917 as of 2022 census, founded by Quakers from North Carolina. It's a small town. We have one restaurant. You have a barber shop and a beauty salon, a volunteer fire department, a coffee shop. It's that small town USA feel with farms that have been around for generations, folks that have called it home for decades, and a home to transplants that are willing to fight to keep it that way. That whole thing. So that little, that little piece of property on the corner, that's, that's where the concern and issue is right now that this whole little meeting is gonna take place for. First off, thank you for the opportunity to come here. My name is Ken. I live locally. Um, I'm a new resident, but I have um, a lot of relevant experience regarding psychiatric facilities, both personal and professional. Um, I recently imported from Napa Valley, California. And Napa now is known for wine, but previously is known for the Napa Insane Asylum built in 1875, operating up until today which has about 1,200 criminally insane patients. I'll clarify things just a little bit. At this point in time, nobody has even brought us anything to look at. So we can't say yes or no. We, we haven't been shown anything. We know they're looking at the property. I've heard they've actually purchased the property. But <coughs> until they bring us something that we can actually say yes or no to, Adoption of the International Fire Code and NFPA guidelines that require hydrants and sprinkler buildings mm -hmm. would mean that they need access to municipal water supply. Right, and that would be infrastructure. But that would require you I mean, to if first they're going adopt to the NFPA guidelines <coughs> and the National Fire Code. Well, well, it's, it's, there's really nothing we can say, you know, yes or no, until we see anything. My name's. I live on. That's inside the city limits of Brownsville. I agree wholeheartedly with the first gentleman. I agree with this gentleman here. And I yield my three minutes if you have anything else to say about fire safety. Well, I'm talking about the lives of children here. And then who is responsible for her? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Then I would like to know who's going to be responsible for paying for these upgrades or these inf these things that that place needs to have. Is it a, is it on the citizens of Friendsville? So I think the issue, the biggest issue we have, is we just happen to be at the July commissioners meeting where Village came, and a couple of things they said <coughs> were just flat out lies. They said that they were looking at the property, but they had already purchased it. And then when they felt any type of pushback or we were questioning them about stuff, um, the COO Jim Chamberlain said, um, whether you like it or not, the higher ups say it's done. And those were his words. So higher ups, we don't know if that's Blount County. Like, we don't know what that meant. All we know now is that um, Acadia, who owns Village, and Covenant Healthcare, who is a, you know, I mean, they're huge companies. They are in a joint venture. They're building a $35 million facility in Knoxville for their, um, the adolescents on, a, on the autistic spectrum. Planning Commissioner Training Handbook, okay, 2004. It's really pretty simple. Intent is the most important thing in a zoning ordinance. The intent statement is the single most overlooked part of the zoning ordinance, yet it goes a long way in defining the local zoning code and placing it into context. So a hospital is allowed in commercial corridor within the context of the intent statement. And the intent statement for commercial corridor talks about aesthetics, traffic safety, and that anything put in that zone is supposed to be for the residents of the city of Friendsville or for the traveling public. 
not for a mental institution. So when you put the intent statement in context with the hospital, there is no way that this would qualify. I mean, it actually violates the zoning ordinance and a stakeholders owning commercial corridor property in that area. If that is, if, if they're allowed here, we will fight it tooth and nail to keep it from coming. We will, you know, we will do whatever we need to. That is not a facility that we want along our corridor. You guys are given the task of protecting our community yes. and taking that corridor in the direction it should go, which is retail, to improve our schools, to improve our roads, to improve our infrastructure, not a mental institution that gives absolutely zero revenue or benefits to our community. So that is the thing. It's an intense thing. I'm fourth generation. My two grandkids that live up the road are sixth generation. I just wanted to say safe, simple, and slow. And all you that have moved here for it, they wrong. Yeah, <laughs> when they have family day, that element that comes to see their family, we've had fist fights, we've had gun fights, we've had all these other things that are happening outside of the facility that's coming. And so you have to also understand once this gets sent in, this opens the highway for more. Okay, so that was a an interesting meeting, to say the least. Um, but it was it was heartwarming to see the turnout, regardless. Um, We'll talk more when we get back home, but that was good. That's good. That was good. All right, so that was a little bit of feedback from a town hall meeting that we were having. So recently, some news broke on 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 Facebook on the internet that a company called Village was proposing construction of an institution for aggressive juveniles. Um, like a behavioral health facility, let's say. Um, there's not a lot of details on it. We know that the land was purchased by them. There's kind of a concept of what they want to build online. Um, so so things kind of struck a chord with, with the small town. And everybody showed up at City Hall, as you can see. Kim is fantastic. She runs the whole show over there. And she's she said she hadn't seen that many people show up. And the interesting fact was... As the council member said, they haven't been presented with anything. This isn't even like something that's in the works. It's even been presented. You know, there's lots of steps still to even go to start the process. Um, so there was a little bit of like caught off guard, right? And they, they had this overwhelmed body language. So I introduced myself towards the end um, and, and spoke briefly just as a, as a transplant from California, right? I'm 41. I saw California at its best, what I think was the best, and watched it completely deteriorate. Moved my family to Tennessee five years ago because this is what we wanted. This is what, this is how we wanted to raise our children. This is the kind of community we want to keep and protect. Um, and I identified myself as being from California and, and brought all that up just because the answers the the committee was giving back to the public that was voicing their concern, even though they don't have the plans or, or this isn't even something that's steamrolling ahead or, or even in the works. But the body language and just the expressions of, hey, look, there's nothing even going on yet. We don't know anything about it. There's nothing in planning. Just kind of dismissing it. They weren't dismissing the residents and the citizens that were there to, to voice themselves. But it was just kind of dismissive as... We don't know what's going on, right? And that's where I just kind of said, hey, you know, I got the same feedback from our representatives in California that, oh, I heard Amazon's coming, but that's just, it's in the works. Like, that's something they proposed. It's its not even been here. Yet. We don't even have plans. It's not even zoned right. Nothing, right? Oh, th that mining company is coming? No, yeah, like, that's not going to happen. Like, and that's what kind of happened when things would spiral out of control because we let our guard down and just assumed like, hey, nothing's even been presented to us, so nothing's going to happen. It's kind of like, you know, you put your kid off to school and you assume they're being taught the right thing, but you don't go to back to school night or anything or find out anything about the teacher. And then you come to find out the, the type of teacher that might be teaching your kid doesn't really align with you, maybe. So that's where I spoke to just kind of like, hey, this is a warning and this means a lot to have all these people here voicing their opinion and y'all should take that very seriously. And I'll tell you why it's scary because the couple that owns the Friendsville Animal Center, 
Um, she was there at the July meeting when Village, um, this this corporation was there and basically didn't want to hear anything they wanted to say. Um, when she brought up that they were tied to Covenant Health, uh, which is a very big hospital and medical system out here in Tennessee. Um, when she mentioned that, it kind of went off in my head. Okay, like we just had three huge Amazon facilities built in this area, Maryville, Knoxville, uh, Alcoa, with some more on the back burner that are in the planning stages. Um, and all of that was opposed as well. But once that money train starts going, you ain't stopping it. There's no way you are stopping it. So they can hear all of our voices and our concerns and our no's, but it's very scary to know what's behind it. So as proposed, like they said, hey, let's have a, a public committee meeting, right? Where they can do a presentation to us. Village can do a presentation of what they want to do and they can hear all of our questions and concerns and give us answers um, if they truly want this thing to go the right way. But we had some fantastic people standing up for the community and speaking out towards it. So there was one gentleman that started the whole thing off with some fire codes and was absolutely fantastic. He definitely did his homework. He had pamphlets that he passed out to everybody just speaking to our volunteer fire department, our response rate for law enforcement. You're going to have hundreds of children in a, a commercial wooden building. You know, if that were to catch on fire, what's the response rate? Like, where's the water coming from? We don't have adequate water to kind of take care of something like that. We have we have house fires out here that, that barely get response in time to put out before having something happen to a family member or a resident of that home. Mm -hmm. So that was a very good, uh, very good, well-prepared discussion. Again, at Friendsville Animal Center had lots of documents and plenty of information. And it was just, it was very heartwarming to see the community come in, right? Because a lot of times stuff is just on Facebook or on Twitter People, people will like something or share something or comment something and they think they did their part, but that doesn't do anything. It, it does absolutely nothing. It actually goes against what needs to be done because you're getting this, this false sense of achievement like you've kind of given to the cause. The real giving to the cause is getting in that little room and all those people there voicing their opinions and saying no, whether or not there's something on the table or not. That was really cool to see because that was the entire community coming together and they're like, no, like we're making a statement right now. We don't want this thing. So it'll be interesting to see where this goes. I'm going to document the entire thing if that be the case. Uh, but yeah, that property, this one right here, like they said it's in a floodplain. There's all sorts of things tied to it. You got an artillery range down the way. So, I mean, that's just what you need. Some children with mental health issues, perhaps they were to get out. Or like the one gentleman said, family day is a big thing. When families come and visit, you're opening up the door to bring all sorts of stuff from the outside in now as well on family day. Um, it just, it doesn't make sense for our little community. So uh, I was very pleased, very excited to see the turnout. Um, we love our small town that we live in. Um, and I'm glad, I'm glad everyone showed up and did and voiced their opinion, regardless if it's not even something that's, you know, in the planning stages yet or come, come to life. So we need to, we need to stop it before it even gets to that point, frankly. So, uh, that's a little update. Um, and y'all should get, get involved if you can. Every city, every little town, there's always committee meetings uh, and they go over everything that's happening, you know, in the town that relates to either budget or events that are going on or, hey, things coming down the line. And I really wish we could get back to where we get full rooms like that for a lot of the stuff. But I get it. People are busy. People have other things going on, which is maybe we could live stream it. I don't know. I'll offer to live stream it uh, if we do have that meeting with with that co corporation. Um, I'd be more than happy to live stream it so that way people that can't make it can make it. Uh, they can sit there and watch it on their phone or on their computer at home and then uh, go about it that way. But absolutely fantastic. Love our small town of Friendsville and uh, we'll see where this thing goes. But hopefully, maybe this will be the last video on it. Maybe this will be the only video on it because we just put a stop to it. Who knows? That is it from East Tennessee.